Hello, my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to make matching questions inside Moodle for quizzes. So as you can see here, I'm already logged into Moodle. And if you move off and if you look off to the right-hand side, underneath the tab for administration, you'll see something called question bank. So click here. And it'll take you to this page. As you know, we've made these questions. They're all examples of different types of questions in prior videos. But in this question, we're looking at matching. I think if you're an educator, you're familiar with matching where you have several different choices, you know, several different choices, uh, several different um, things that a student needs to, to define or whatever, and they have to try to match the, uh, the item on the left-hand side with the appropriate response on the right-hand side. Um, so to do this, we do click on create a new question, and we're going to go right down here to matching. Click add. So question, so as you can see here, the stuff with the red dots, you have to provide a name, you have to provide you know information. So question name, you have to give it a name, so we're gonna call this um, classical music matching, because this will make sense in a, in a second. Next, you have to put the question text. Normally for the question text, I put directions on what to do, but um, it's up to the individual person, but normally the best thing to, to do when you're doing a matching type question set is to uh, put the direction here. So I'm going to put, let me make this nice and big for you so you can see it. Match the composer with the era of music in which they wrote music. All right, so that's what they're gonna do. Now for the default mark, Again, matching questions are a little bit more complicated, so I suggest that there were more than one point. So for example, if you have several potential matching uh, questions, it should prob probably be worth five points. However, it's up to you and your own philosophy on, on assessment, but I recommend that for default mark. General feedback, again, it'll give you whatever uh, whatever feedback you want them to, 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 to have, regardless of if, if it was um, they did the, the, the correct answer or if they did it wrong, it's just general feedback. And also shuffle here, if you click on this, it'll shuffle the answers if you so desire to do that. And also it'll shuffle it so that two students will be looking at the same question but they'll have the answers in the different, in a different order. So um, next we have to put the questions here. So. If you read the directions, it tells you you must provide at least two questions and three answers. And you can provide extra wrong answers by giving an answer without a, by giving an answer while leaving the question blank. Now, this is where it gets com confusing. These really aren't questions. If you're doing, you know, regular um, matching, they're just kind of spaces where the student has to figure it out. So, remember, my question was about okay, match the composer with their error. So the per first person I'm going to put is J S Bach. And if you're familiar with music, you know that, that the answer for this is that he was a Baroque composer. And then I might put um, Wolfgang um, Amadeus Mozart. And if you're familiar with music again, you know that he was a classical era musician. And then of course, you know, I'll put Frederick Chopin. And he was more of a romantic composer. Now, notice so far is one to one. I have an ant I have a question like, okay, what era is J.S. Bach from? But I don't have to type out what era is he from because if you look here at the top in my question text, I provided instructions on what to do. So the student knows that they're matching composer to the to the to the music era, the era of music in which they wrote music. But if I really want to make this a traditional question, so to speak, I would say, in what era did J.S. Bach write music? And they would put Baroque. In what era did Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart write music? And then the student must select classical. But I don't need to repeat that information because I put the directions right here. So I don't have to make these questions, so to speak. I hope this, this makes sense. It'll make more sense when you see the, uh, the, the, the example, um, the completed version of this. Now, I need to put some distractors here. So in order to do that, I click on blank for more questions. And again, it says here, you can provide extra wrong answers by giving an answer with a blank question. So I need to put some more choices down here. So maybe I'll do two more 
medievals, excuse me if I spelled it wrong, and also 20th century. All right, that's how we do it. Okay, I think we're satisfied. So let me just review what we've done so far. We're making a matching question. The name of it is classical music matching. The directions are here. Match the composer with the era of music in which they wrote music. That's our question text. This is the directions for how to complete this assessment. Now, as you know, I put three different composers. So for me, this question should be, this matching section should be worth three points. I don't need to put any general feedback. It'll also shuffle the answers for me if I so desire, which this is why I left the check, the, the box uh, checked. And so the first one was J.S. Bach. He was a Baroque composer. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He was a classical composer. Frederick Chopin was a romantic composer. And I also put two distractors. So there's no question here. And then I put medieval because I want medieval to be a distractor. Medieval is another um, error of music. And then also I put 20th century as another distractor. Notice again how the question is left blank because this is not a correct answer. That's why it's left blank. Now, I don't need another distractor, so I can ignore question number six. I don't have to put a question or an answer because I don't need number six. So now I click Save Changes. And let's see what happens. All right. So the, the example we just created is right here. If we want to preview it, we click on the little magnifying glass, and let's see what we have. And so you can see it right here. Master composer with the era of music in which they wrote music. So Frederick Chopin. Notice how all the choices are available. I have to make sure I select the correct one. And then the same thing for Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, and then of course J.S. Bach. And so when I'm satisfied, I click save and I'm done. And notice also, I know this is very hard to see, but if you can see right here, uh, let me make it a little bit bigger. This one, this particular question is out of three points. Again, I did that because I had three possible, I had three potential answers that need, three potential questions that needed to an answer. So that's how we do that. All right, so I hope that this video was useful for you. In this particular video, we, we looked at how to make matching questions inside the Moodle question bank. And so when you're doing this type of question, of course you have to give the, the question a name, provide some directions in the question text, and you must have, um, questions which these are the questions right here with also their answer and in addition you need to also make sure you have some distractors at least one additional one Moodle requires in the video in this example I gave you two and these uh, distractors allow the students to you know have several more choices and to um, make sure that you know that there are more possible answers than there are questions so we hope this video was useful for you we thank you for watching take care